After spending so much time on UFC 3, I thought I'd offer my thoughts on UFC 4. These are my thoughts on the game as a whole, and we'll be breaking things down into three categories. Presentation, gameplay, and game modes. But before we get started, I wanted to say that the previous UFC games had free updates throughout its life cycle that fixed issues that plagued the game. So keep in mind, some of the things that I'll be crying about like a baby could be patched out by the time you watch this video. Anyway, to start this, oh! UFC 4 goes for this stylistic paintbrush look. I don't know how to explain it. I like it. It gives the game some needed personality, and it's such a good contrast to UFC 3 style, or lack thereof. The fighter select screen is also simpler this time around, because now it's more reminiscent of a traditional fighting game screen. It's much better than scrolling by the fighters one by one until you get to the fighter that you want. This is much more user friendly. You can even sort by the best rated fighters or alphabetically. Fighters are rated with a star system, and I am not really a fan. Like, numbers are the most accurate thing in existence, and everyone understands them. When I hear stars, I think of movie reviews, or Yelp reviews, or Dave Meltzer. But don't fret, because if you're a numbers whore like I am, you can toggle the stats to numbers. And when you finally select your guy, they do this Mortal Kombat pose to each other. It's pretty corny and pretty hokey, but I'm here for it. When it comes to character designs, this is where we start to have some problems. Some fighters were updated like Jorge Masvidal and Israel Adesanya, and they look really good. Some have been updated and look weird. Conor McGregor looks like he uses cement for hair gel. The women in general are a mixed bag. They look like they're molded out of clay. Also, some fighters haven't been updated at all despite being radically different or needing an update in general. I was going to talk about Donald I went through 12 rounds of chemo Cerrone, but, to EA's credit, he among others have been updated. Good on them, and I hope they continue this. Oh, and Tyson Fury looks like an albino Shrek. I just like to point that out. I don't understand how stuff like this is even possible. You know those people who are like, Sports games are the same game every year, they just update the roster. Well, they couldn't even do that right for the most part. And this has been two and a half years since the last game. Entrances, pre-fight announcements, and post-fight announcements are largely untouched, too. I like to mention two and a half years, people. The one new thing in presentation is pre-fight taunting and post-fight celebrations. Oh boy. When the ref asks if you're ready, you have four taunts you can choose from. They can range from pointing to full-out dances. I'd be somewhat fine with this, but it's so awkwardly executed. Firstly, there's a wide-angle shot of the ref walking into the middle of the octagon. It looks like something you'd see out of Gary's mod. He points to each fighter, and then they do their taunt or dance that lasts an uncomfortable amount of time. I'm guessing the reason they added this, specifically the dances, is because they wanted to capitalize on a trend of dances in video games. It just looks hokey as hell to me. It's also weird because a taunt is selected for you no matter what, so this leads to certain fighters like Steven Thompson doing uncharacteristic things like flexing on his opponent before the fight starts. The post-fight celebrations are no better. After you win your fight, you once again have the option of picking four different options to choose from for your post-fight celebration. These are more accurate to your fighter. I like Masvidal's celebration where he goes stiff as a board, alluding to his fight he had with Ben Askren. But once again, the execution is super awkward. When choosing your celebration, your fighter roams around then positions himself in the middle of the octagon, as if he's taking a school photo, and then the camera cuts to him celebrating again. Commentary this year is by John Anik in DC, who is replacing Joe Rogan. Go with this welterweight showdown, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Tyron Woodley. A lot of familiarity, DC, in this match. We've seen these guys compete on a couple of occasions, and we know how evenly matched they are. Who is going to take the center of the octagon, lead the dance, and determine how the third fight finally plays out? It's sad to not hear Rogan's commentary this year, but in last year's game, they had to reuse audio clips from real fights because Rogan couldn't record audio all that often. I'm fine with this. I'd rather hear something done right, and DC does a great job. Both Anik and DC play off each other pretty well, and it's funny when DC calls a fight that has him in it. It's also pretty funny when he breaks the fourth wall. Well, his opponent tonight has done a good job of getting back 
to his feet, and just as I say that, planted on his back again. Another takedown over and over and over. Look, man, I'm a wrestler, and I love takedowns, but come on, do something different. Press punch, <laughs> do one of the special moves. I mean, Jesus, takedown after takedown. All right, no telestrator for the champ tonight, but that's okay. He'll still talk you through the replays. Body kicks for days, man. I mean, body kicks for days, but I gotta be honest, John. If we don't incorporate a telestrator <laughs> into this game, this may be my only version of EA UFC. The only problem I have are the ones that plague every sports game, and that's repetitive dialogue. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him, know when, when to fold him. Yep, absolutely. Go. I was only a couple hours in the game when I heard the know when to hold him, know when to fold him line or the Dikembe Mutombo line. I hope they add more lines in future updates. Like when a fighter just had a fight, have the commentary talk about how it went. This shouldn't be too hard since you actually get DC in there to record. One other problem is that commentary is very, very glitchy. There'll be moments where commentators say the wrong things like I knocked someone out with a punch when it was a kick or vice versa, or I'll knee someone in the head and they'll say it was to the body. The oddest thing is that a fight could end, they'll acknowledge it, and then they'll talk about how the fighter can survive even though the fight is already over. Also, they'll react twice to one knockout. I'm not making this up. Oh, and that is it. Choked him to sleep with the arm chop. The moment he dropped his chest, it dropped all of his weight on his opponent's neck and put him to sleep. Jiu-Jitsu practitioners around the world celebrating the effort of that young man tonight. He's done, he's done. <laughs> there are multiple different venues to choose from. An ordinary venue, the backyard, and a kumite. Did you say kumite? Yes, the kumite. <laughs> the arena setting looks nice, but it's exactly the same as UFC 3. You have the fans, the cameramen, ring girls, or I guess they're octagon girls, whatever, and all that good stuff. The game itself looks good, although it's not a huge graphical improvement from UFC 3, if any graphical improvement at all. The Backyard and the Kumite are inspired by cover boys Jorge Masvidal and Israel Adesanya. Masvidal grew up in these street fight settings. He was even featured in Kimbo Slice's videos. Adesanya is, uh, um, uh, I don't know what he has to do with the Kumite, but, uh, they had to give him something, right? They both look fine. The only problem I have is that they both have a ton of motion blur on it. There are times where I feel like I can hardly see, but it's good. I really love the look of the Kumite. It looks like some Mortal Kombat shit and I'm all here for it. It even has the over the top sound effects and the Mortal Kombat-esque announcer. This is what sports games are missing nowadays. This is something I'll comment on when we talk about career mode a little bit later on, but the backyard and Akumite aren't used in any way outside of standard exhibitions. The final thing in regards to the presentation is the replay system. Let's see that in an instant replay. Hey, do me a favor. What's your favorite sports game? I bet my entire Domino's gift card collection that game has a damn replay option. UFC 4 doesn't have manual replays. How is such a thing not included when every single sports game from the last two decades has it? Hell, even most regular games nowadays give you free control of the camera. Yes, you have post round and post fight replays, but sometimes they can show you shitty angles and the game decides what to highlight. I figured there was something where they can give you free control of the camera because it would reveal like missing textures or whatever, but you get these fan angles in career mode. So what the French toast? Overall, the presentation has its high and low marks. I really like the UI, the alternate fight arenas, and the graphics, while mostly staying the same, look pretty damn good. The character models, the repetitive and glitchy commentary, and the new pre and post fight celebration need fine tuning. They make the game look amateur, and the only time I want to see that word is on the Pornhub category. UFC 4 has a section which explains how to play the game. The section covers everything you need to know and it's much better than UFC 3 which just threw you into the lion's den without explaining like half the mechanics the game has. There are also video tutorials that are made by YouTube content creators. 
Cool, you can watch them without hearing about Raid Shadow Legends, or NordVPN, or Raycon Earbuds, or SeatGeek, or... When it comes to MMA striking, you obviously have a lot more variables than a boxing game. You have two buttons that throw punches and two buttons that throw kicks. If you just press them on their own, you would throw just jabs, straights, and leg kicks. But the top buttons on your controller are strike modifiers that let you throw different stuff. So if you press triangle, it's a straight punch. Press triangle while holding L2, it's a straight to the body. Press triangle while holding L1 and L2, it's a hook to the body. Ideally, you would want to use combination using the button modifiers to be an effective striker. Certain fighters have access to combos and moves, so don't think you're gonna go in there with Derek Lewis and start throwing cartwheel kicks or something. My balls was hot. I understand. Throwing combos is different than what you would think because you have to load up your strikes in order to throw them effectively. Ugh, this is hard to explain. So in order to throw a jab straight hook, you would enter the button combination in one fell swoop rather than waiting for each strike to be thrown. This is weird at first, but it's fine. You might think, wait a minute, doesn't loading up your strikes leave you open to attack if you miss? No, it doesn't because of fainting. You can stop any strike that you begin to throw by pressing R2. Fainting is amazing, and it adds a huge layer of strategy to this barbarian version of chess. I can work the body the whole match, then faint to the body and go to the head for some damage. You can faint any strike in the game, so get creative. Speaking of defensive moves, you can block too, but you can't rely on block forever because your block will eventually be broken and punches and kicks can get through. One of the things that this game does really well and doesn't even get any credit for is the way how strikes break through blocks. If you throw jabs and uppercuts to your opponent, they'll start to cover their face, leaving their sides open for hooks and head kicks. If you throw hooks, they'll cover the sides of their head, which is then open for jabs to the face and uppercuts. It's something that adds a ton of depth and strategic thinking behind each strike. And another thing I like about striking is strikes actually have stopping power. You can't just fling power punches because they can be intercepted by a strike if it lands first. You can't just spam body shots because one uppercut or needed a head and you'll take a lot of damage. You could sway with head movement too and you can block while swaying, which is something new to UFC 4. Adding that into the game made it one step closer to everyone's favorite EA game. Def Jam icon. You don't have full control of swaying though. You can only lean in four positions, but you can't do anything in between like the Fight Night games, which is disappointing to say the least. Swaying is a good tool to dodge strikes, but if you lean into a strike, the damage you would take is massive. It can be a risk versus reward situation. Attacking different body parts leads to different things. Damage to the body leads to stamina drain, which means the less stamina you have, the more open to big damage you are. This may be addressed in an update, but I would like body strikes to do a little bit more damage and drain a little bit more stamina. The only time when I get someone's stam stamina, stamina, stamina. The only time when I get someone's stamina low is when I'm playing someone just launching haymakers the whole match. They shouldn't be taking this many rear body kicks and not even being rocked from it. It's a little ridiculous. Leg kicks eventually lead to your opponent falling from them. You can throw a well-timed leg kick to trip up your opponent. However, a check leg kick can do damage to you in reverse. Besides that, leg kicks don't reduce anyone's speed or, as far as I can tell, reduce anyone's power. This should be fixed. It makes going for leg kicks a little less worth it, especially since you can switch your stance and fight just as well as if you were in your primary stance. If your leg is hurt, it should be shown in the gameplay, which it's not. UFC 4 fixes a lot of the cheapness that was in UFC 3 and added a couple new things like the aforementioned blocking and swaying. They incorporated fakes into the game as well, and no, I'm not talking about the feints from earlier. Some fighters have fakes that go into other moves. So for instance, holding L1 and tapping a kick button will do a head kick, but holding down the kick button will do a question mark kick instead. UFC 4 looks exactly like UFC 3, which might be disappointing to some considering UFC 3 was a huge change from UFC 2. I think adding new strike animations that are exclusive to certain fighters would have been the great next logical step in my opinion. They kinda did this with kicking. Not everyone is as proficient as, let's say, Conor McGregor when throwing kicks, so some guys who don't throw kicks that often throw kicks like this instead. I like the idea, but it's a bit exaggerated. 
There should be no reason why the Diaz brothers are throwing Daniel Bryan yes kicks during a fight. He just looks silly and unimpactful. Besides that, and a couple other exceptions, most fighters throw strikes exactly the same, which is silly. Francis Nanganu shouldn't be throwing uppercuts the same way as Max Holloway. This was the next logical step to differentiate these fighters, and it just wasn't done. But overall, striking is fun and has depth and strategy behind it. But now let's talk about everyone's favorite pastime, grappling with big sweaty men. Something that's been completely redone this year is clinching. Pressing R1 in your lead hand will initiate a clinch and you'll immediately see that this is completely different from UFC 3. The clinch in UFC 4 is fast paced and quick as opposed to the slow clinch in UFC 3 where you hug stationary in the middle of the octagon. When you initiate the clinch, you could do several things from here. Strike your opponent with punches, elbows, knees, uppercuts, etc. You could take down your opponent, go for a trip, transition to a new position, go for a submission, drive them to the cage. You have a short amount of time to do this though because the clinch is just that quick. I love the clinch in this game. It's quick, doesn't slow down the fight to a screeching halt, and looks more like a real life clinch unlike this. But not all is perfect in Jock Sniff land. It's obvious EA wants this game to be as user friendly as possible. While I shit and despise on the clinch from UFC 3, the controls share the same principles as the ground game, which unified them. While UFC 4's clinch is its own thing, this can be confusing for new players coming in because it's just another control scheme for them to learn for a grand total of three control schemes to learn. I also think not having a way to deny a clinch attempt is not the right way to go about things. Sure, you can throw a straight punch to interrupt the clinch or you can just sway, but I think having a denial bond would even the playing field a little bit. Also, while you're on defense to escape the clinch, you just move backwards and that's it. Even when you're pressed against the cage, you can escape within five seconds which is just dumb. Takedowns are here and guess what? I love those too. For the most part, as the takedowner, you can go for a single leg or double leg takedowns. As the takedown E, you can defend it by holding low block. If you're late, you're going down. If you're on time, you stuff the takedown and now you're in a more advantageous position. If the takedown E is slightly late with their denial, you're going into a driving takedown. From here, the takedowner has to flick the left stick in a direction to drive the takedown E. The takedown E has to match the direction or he's going down. This works well in my opinion. I see people online struggling with takedown defense and I'm not having that much trouble with it. I think what happens is people just let go of the triggers as they're being taken down, which would cancel the whole thing. But I do think takedowns should be slightly easier to deny, especially when a takedowner has low stamina. Stamina, 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 stamina. I'm pressuring this dude that's hurt and he just grabs me, lifts me up over his head and gives me an attitude adjustment all while having low ass stamina. Yeah, that shouldn't be a thing. When you're that low on stamina, your takedown should fail like 90% of the time. That can be addressed in an update, but I'm a fan of the new takedowns overall. Now you wanna know what I'm not a fan of? The ground game. What about the ground game do I hate? In the ground game, they made transition simplified to help out new users. You can transition to spots that can work you towards a submission, ground and pound. This is done for people who don't really know the difference between like half guard and full guard and side control. This is fine, but if you use this method, then you're just limiting yourself from going to certain transitions. So it's a mixed bag. Just use the old way. It sucks too, but at least you have 100% freedom. In order to deny transitions, you press and hold R2 and move the right stick in a direction where your opponent's heading. The bar at the top is called the grapple advantage. The more grapple advantage you have, the more likely your transition will succeed. You build the grapple advantage by denying transitions, landing little strikes, and fakes. Fakes are essential to the ground game. You start a transition, then you press the block button to cancel. This looks Dumb. Show me groundwork that looks like this and I'll respond with that's not groundwork, that's two fat dudes fighting. Say goodnight. 
The new thing about groundwork this year is the ground and pound, and it is without a doubt the worst thing about this damn game. Once you posture up, you enter into this glorified game of patty cake. As the attacker, you throw straights and hooks, and as a defender, you sway, block hooks, cover up. If the defender can timely sway a punch, he'll reverse position, or even get up. The reason I hate this is because you know how when you play a video game, you press a button and then something happens accordingly? As the striker, you press a button and then the punch comes out like half a second later. I think what's going on here is that the striking here is trying to take the same cues from the stand-up striking, meaning that you press a button and the game is loading up your button presses, like the stand-up game. That's fine for the stand-up striking, but when we're trying to desperately pound someone's face in, it's not needed. UFC 3's ground and pound is shit too. The punches are so slow and they look like pro wrestling punches when they actually connect. But the thing about UFC 3's ground and pound is that it doesn't take away from your freedom to do things. In UFC 4, once you posture up, you and a defender can't transition, can't go for submissions, can't throw elbows or hammer fists, can't do a damn thing. As a defender, after a while, you'll pull the attacker's head down. All these restrictions make me feel like I'm playing a damn mobile game. And yes, I realize you can actually pull off transitions when you're postured up, but my point is it's completely situational depending on your opponent's stamina. I want to transition whenever I want. I want to block the defender from grabbing my head. I want a ground game that doesn't suck. The worst thing about ground and pound is that the opportunity to deny posturing up is so brief, and most fights are finished in ground and pound, so you're in it a lot. The ground game in general is so still and motionless, it lacks the explosiveness that the clinch has. You can't move while you're on the ground, try and push yourself up against the cage, or do anything like that. You're just stuck like you're glued to the floor. All MMA fights aren't this stiff and motionless. Most of the time you're just waiting around, waiting to gain grapple advantage or stamina advantage. On the ground, there are no new positions besides knee on belly, which is a ground and pound position, so you know it sucks. Submissions are completely redone. There are two new minigames, choking ones and joint ones. Choking submissions place two bars in a circle. The attacker needs to get their bar into the opponent's bar to build up submission meter at the bottom. The defender's bar expands if they move too fast, so you have to move slowly and precisely. Over the course of this, bun prompts will appear on the screen for both attacker and defender. The defender can reverse into a position of their own, strike the attacker, or slam them, depending on the submission. The attacker can chain the submission into something else, or throw strikes. This works, but the problem here is that both attacker and defender have unlimited movement speed with the bar. It just turns most submission attempts into ape shit. Giving both attackers and defenders a movement speed cap would do this minigame wonders, but right now it's a damn free-for-all. However, the joint submissions are more of the same, you use the triggers instead of the sticks. I like this one because it's not in a circle and the use of the triggers range is a cool idea. If you have all these spastic movements like you do in the circle minigame, you're gonna get submitted easily. Overall, I'm fine with the submissions. It's martial arts. Jones is trying for a submission here. Fighters in general take too much damage and I feel like flash KOs are too rare. There are so many knockdowns and rocks in a fight that it's truly ridiculous. I understand this can happen sometimes, but not every fighter is Tony Ferguson for crying out loud. Not everyone is going to take an absolute beating and keep coming back for more. Flash KOs are in the game but they only really happen when you've done enough damage first, or you catch someone with no statima by surprise. I feel no one in this game has any one-punch knockout power. Francis Nganu in real life is a heavyweight that has fights that last shorter than a virgin's first sex experience. In this game, he doesn't feel like he has that devastating power that I'm talking about here. I could throw haymakers and the fighter just takes them. I mean, look at this. Advanced. 
I never feel like I can have a fight end at any second. Speaking of ending fights, there are still no TKOs in this game, which is absolutely unreal to me. When you're hitting your opponent to finish a fight, he just goes limp and the fight is over, like he dies. The referee doesn't even jump in to break up the ground and pound or submissions. Look, this guy's getting the life choked out of him until he passes out and the ref doesn't give two dams. He's just chilling in the back, waving his arms like an NFL ref who's signaling an incomplete pass. It's funny because when in ground and pound, sometimes you hear fight back, fight back from the ref, which implies that he'll stop the fight, but it's not in the game and it never happens. The commentators even talk about doctor stoppages, but it never happens. The probable prevailing thought here about all this is that it's not fair to the player for a fight to be stopped by the ref. My response to that is, if you're getting your ass beat so bad that the ref has to step in, then you deserve to lose. I mean, this is a mixed martial arts simulation game, right? How can you not have something that's in majority of the fights? It's like making an NFL game with no kickers, or an NBA game with no free throws. Wait, those games do exist. It's called NFL Street and NBA Street. If you want to make a UFC street, be my guest, but in this simulation game, I'd expect some, oh, I don't know, simulation. The camera keeps this traditional view for most of the time. It works, but my main problem with the camera is that it's always swinging around everywhere. When two fighters have a good bit of space in between them, the camera takes this, I don't know what you would call it, this angle, I don't know. And when you guys get close, it goes to this traditional angle. The camera can swing back and forth in between the two angles if you guys are spacing and getting close to each other over and over again. This is also a reason why the motion blur is so prevalent in the other venues. The camera can also be pretty glitchy as well, especially during the ground game. In the ground game, you have to react to which direction your opponent's heading in order to stop transitions, but the camera can be lagging behind the action. There are times when the camera's panning to the ground where the fighters are, the fighters can take advantage of the poor camera as it's panning around. And there are times where it's just going crazy out of nowhere. Like, can you tell what's going on right now? What kind of angle is this? I haven't experienced the amount of glitches that a lot of other people have. I still get a fair share of fighters just like spazzing out and animations not playing the way they were intended to. That's a sign of things to come as he lands a case. He's hurt really bad. He's got hurt here. Career mode returns and it seems to take more of a cinematic approach. At least that's what it seems like at the start. It starts with a guy named Coach Davis talking to you about your UFC debut that's coming up. And he tells you to enter your name and info, which means you're gonna create your guy from here on out. This may be a disappointment to some people, but Game Face is gone. I understand why the hard to use Game Face isn't here anymore, but I was looking forward to importing my face from UFC 3. If you wanna see more about Game Face and other games where you import your face, I made a video on that, so yeah, check that out if you want to. I just used the preset. The creator seems pretty limited as it seems to focus more on accessories and little knickknacks to wear rather than implementing simple stuff like facial hair and regular hair options. The haircuts you could choose from are like super cuts haircuts, like who styles their hair like this? Eh, just go with a preset. After creating your guy, Coach Davis retells a story where you completely get outmatched and lose. Davis was so impressed by you that he wants to coach you from here on out. From here on out, you participate in training sessions that act as tutorials and fight against glorified punching bags until you get invited to the Ultimate Fighter. In your first fight, if you beat your opponent in the first round, you immediately get a contract. I did that, and as soon as I signed the contract, things go downhill as far as the career mode is concerned. Right when you sign that contract, you're just thrusted into UFC 3's career mode with some changes here and there. I cannot express my disappointment with mere words here. You get no more cutscenes and never speak to Coach Davis outside of like text messages. But these cutscenes only come when like you're already challenging for a title or you're having a super fight or it's your final fight. Okay kid, one last time into the breach. It's been a long road. The mouths are showing on <laughs> both of us. Hey, nothing wrong with that. These cutscenes are supposed to invoke some type of emotion because of the long journey you went through, but it falls flat because you never see this dude again after you sign with the UFC. 
So all of these, I'm so proud of you, man, we came so far, cutscenes fall completely flat. When the backyard and the Kumite were announced, I thought career mode would be centered around those things. Maybe you participate in street fights to get noticed, that's how you start up, or you have a dream sequence where you fight in the Kumite. Something different, something fresh, but we get more of the same. So the main thing you'll be doing in career mode is balancing, promoting your fight, training for your fight, and treat injuries. You promote your fights to gain hype, which translates to more fans you make and more people buying your pay-per-view, which leads to you getting more money. You promote your fights by posting to social media, taking part in photo shoots, news interviews, among other things. Sponsorships are new and give money along with more promotion opportunities. Training for your fights is different this time around because rather than simulate training like it was in UFC 3, you go into training with specific things in mind. You could choose from boxing, wrestling, Muay Thai, or Jiu Jitsu. You have sparring sessions that are centered around your choice, and you have a challenge to do to earn more evolution points, which is the new thing that's used to upgrade your guy and buy perks. These challenges are fairly simple, like throw combos and whatnot, but some challenges are weird, like throw punches. Your punches don't have to connect or anything, just throw punches. Using certain moves upgrades them, so sparring is a good opportunity to upgrade the moves you like. Besides upgrading your guy, you're training to get your fitness up to peak. Not doing so will lead you going into a fight with temporary lowered stats. You can also get injured while training and that can have a negative impact on your stats, so it's best to be careful when sparring. You can actually miss a fight too if you're too badly injured, which is a feature I appreciate. You can also injure your sparring partner and he won't be able to train with two, which is pretty cool. While training might be different, it gets old very, very fast. You're just doing two minutes sparring over and over and over again. There's nothing to break up the repetitiveness. How about some modes where you're weight training, like in fight night, or doing cardio? How about implementing something where you're trying to make weight for your fight? Something to break up the boredom? You could pay fighters to learn new moves, and in order to learn a move, you just hit them with it. They hardly defend, so I don't really understand why I even have this. Listen. Just give me the move. And I like to point out besides spending money on moves and treating injuries, money is completely worthless in this game. I have millions of dollars and nothing to do with it. The money here is almost as worthless as the money in Road to the Show mode. You can watch tape on your opponent to unlock their ratings and what type of fighter they are. The only part of this that is helpful is the tendencies because it tells you exactly how they fight. And there's nothing more to it than this going through the same things over and over and over again until your longevity runs out and then you retire. Even from a presentation standpoint, there are no post-fight interviews, no weigh-ins, no face-offs. It's funny because the loading screens have the standoffs. And another thing that annoys me is that you face off against the same people as well. Fighters can retire, as you can see by the legendary CM Punk retiring right here, but once you win the title, you can only run through the same guys again, who are at that point in their mid to late 40s. No new generated fighters come into the division to change things up. As far as fighting against the AI, I went with the legendary difficulty and it's pretty difficult. The main reason it's hard is because the computer button reads your inputs, meaning whatever you throw, the computer will instantly pick something to counter it. You have to use fakes to draw the computer in and attack. What I did for most fights was I got the fights to the ground, blocked a couple of transitions, then tapping them out each time. Career mode is a huge disappointment. With all the lead up, with all the media surrounding the backyard and the Kumite, it's not used at all in career mode. If or when there's a UFC 5, we need a complete overhaul. Anything else is unacceptable. Online modes are here too. You have quick match where you can set up divisions, number of rounds, if you want stand up only or if you want no creative fighters. You should use quick match to get your feet wet. It's pretty laid back. When in quick match, you could also get the backyard and the kumite at random, so just be aware of that. The game has these little cards that display your accolades and your oh so quirky personality. Blitz battles is a new online mode where you have certain stipulations to your fights. Some can be a best of three with this health bar, some can be punching only. The different playstyles this mode gives you is fun and it forces you to play differently. Normally when I throw kicks, I either feint a punch or I use my punches to set it up. But you can't really do that one in this one where you can only throw kicks. And just like that, the fight is over. It's a fun challenge. Some stipulations aren't as good though, like the one where you have one one minute round to fight in. 
The judging is messed up in this one. Look at this, I landed more significant strikes, more strikes in general, a takedown, and controlled my opponent for more than half of the fight. But I lose. <laughs> Screw all that. With each fight, you advance around and you go on to your sixth and final round, which gets you pretty much nothing, as far as I can tell. You make progression towards this game's challenge list, which is pretty much a bunch of challenges that gets you experience, which gets you closer to unlocking some knickknacks and little player profile card thingies. Uh, that's not really my style, and I don't really think it adds that much to the game. Blitz Battles is a fun diversion overall, though. Ranked Championships is the main online mode. In Ranked Championships, you fight to move up divisions and win titles. This is where most of the competitive players play. Online play, as far as stability goes, is just fine. I never run into any laggy games not unless my opponent's connection was just awful. A big controversial change this year is that you're locked to a random division to fight in, instead of just choosing the division you want. So if you want to play as someone from middleweight, but ranked is locked on heavyweight, you have no choice or you gotta go into quick match and fight. This is a mixed bag. Locking me into a division makes me pick fighters that I wouldn't have picked before, but there are times where I just want to play as a specific fighter, but I just can't. And this is a problem in some divisions that are lighter than others. Look at the women's flyweight division that's even more paper thin than it is in real life. And it only has two credible fighters outside of your creative fighter. Taking away choice has never really been my thing in games like this. If I had to choose, I'd like to be able to choose what divisions I want to fight in. But this isn't too much of a big deal for me. But I know it is for others. Now, what I really don't like is fighting against creative fighters. I want to play against regular people. Like I said, they're trying so hard to capitalize on this Fortnite market with all these ridiculous hairstyles and dances and glowing colorful attire. This isn't my thing at all. I'm not against having creative fighters, but give me the option to turn this stuff off, please. So on Blitz Battles, you choose your fighter and then match up with someone. I don't know why this isn't the case in Ranked. In Ranked, both players select their fighters and they can see who their opponent is picking so they can counter pick if they want. You can also see your opponent's level, username, and how many points they have so you can duck out of fights if you think you're playing against someone good. As far as gameplay goes, it's fine. The only cheese I really see is clinching because there's not a way to deny clinches so people just constantly do it and the painfully shitty ground and pound because the option to deny a posture up is too short. Online play is good for the most part, but once again, it's lacking content. One of the notable absences, especially for an EA Sports title, is the lack of an ultimate team. I'm not complaining because I don't like ultimate team in general, and UFC 3's ultimate team didn't really impress me because you had to unlock moves for your creative fighter, and it was very much not my thing. But since it's not in UFC 4, it's one less game mode you had to play, which means less replayability that the game has. The game has this UFC currency you can use to unlock the wacky dances and the neon parts or whatever, but surprisingly, microtransactions aren't really prevalent. You can buy these little UFC points here, but there's really no need to do so, not unless you really can't wait to get those pants or something, I don't know. UFC 4 is not a bad game at all, but it didn't take any necessary steps to make itself better. They've made some changes, some of them good, some of them really not good. But overall, there's just a lack of content. I'm really disappointed that career mode has not evolved whatsoever. And some of the new additions like the ground and pound are awful. But there's actually a good foundation here for a great game. Like I've mentioned, the stand-up striking is really, really good. If you could come up with a ground game that doesn't suck and put in some more content that's worth going through, I think this UFC series can be something that's really, really great. But as of right now, it's just okay. Once you get through career mode, you have nothing else to do besides playing exhibition matches online, whether it's ranked or quick match. It's more like you would spend a little bit of time on it and not anything that's serious. EA played it safe for this game. The jump from UFC 2 to UFC 3 was huge. The same cannot be said for the jump to UFC 3 to UFC 4. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video. If you like sports games, check out my other stuff, maybe? And maybe subscribe if you're into that sort of thing? Take care.